Hare Krishna everyone, so welcome back to Shravanam Diaries podcast. I'm your host Sulalita Devidasi and we are continuing to read teachings of Queen Kunti. By His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So chapter 4, Approaching Krishna, the All-Pervading Truth. Hmm. This is the verse. Ah, so... Krishna Yava Sudevaya Deva ki Nanda Nayacha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha Krishna Yava Sudevaya Deva ki Nanda Nayacha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha Let me therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord who has become the son of Vasudeva, the pleasure of Devaki, the boy of Nanda and the other cowherd men of Vrindavan, and the enlivener of the cows and the senses. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.8.21 PURPORT The Lord being thus unapproachable by any material assets, out of unbounded and causeless mercy, descends on the earth, as he is in order to show his special mercy upon his unalloyed devotees, and to diminish the upsurges of the demoniac persons. Queen Kunti specifically adores the incarnation or descent of Lord Krishna above all other incarnations, because in this particular incarnation he is more approachable. In the Rama incarnation he remained a king's son from his very childhood, but in the incarnation of Krishna, although he was the son of a king, he at once left the shelter of his father and mother. King Vasudeva and Queen Devaki, real father and mother, just after his appearance and went to the lap of Yashoda Mai to play the part of an ordinary cowherd boy in the blessed Vrajabhumi, which is very sanctified because of his childhood pastimes. Therefore, Lord Krishna is more merciful than Lord Rama. He was undoubtedly very kind to Kunti's brother, Vasudeva, and the family. Had he not become the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, Queen Kunti could not claim him to be her nephew and thus address Krishna in parental affection. But Nanda and Yashoda are more fortunate because they could relish the Lord's childhood pastimes, which are more attractive than all other pastimes. There is no parallel to his childhood pastimes, as exhibited at Vrajabhumi, which are the prototypes of his eternal affairs in the original Krishna Loka, described as the Chintamani Dhamma in the Brahma Samhita. Lord Sri Krishna descended himself at Vrajabhumi with all his transcendental entourage and paraphernalia. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore confirmed that no one is as fortunate as the residents of Vrajabhumi and specifically the cowherd girls who dedicated their everything for the satisfaction of the Lord. His pastimes with Nanda and Yashoda and his pastimes with the cowherd men and especially with the cowherd boys and the cows have caused him to be known as Govinda. Lord Krishna as Govinda is more inclined to the Brahmanas and the cows, indicating thereby that human prosperity depends more on these two items 
namely Brahminical culture and cow protection. Lord Krishna is never satisfied where these are lacking. Hmm, very important point. In the beginning of her prayers, Kunti Devi said, Namasye Purusham Tvadyam Ishvaram Prakriteh Param I offer my obeisances unto the person Purusha, who is Prakrite Param, beyond this material manifestation. Thus, in the beginning, Kunti Devi gave us the understanding that God is the Supreme Purusha, the Supreme Person. He is not impersonal. He is a person. But he is not a person of this material world or this material creation. And he does not have a material body. This is to be understood. The poor fund of knowledge held by the impersonalists cannot accommodate how the supreme, absolute truth can be a person. Because whenever they think of a person, they think of a person of this material world. That is their defect. Why should God be a person of this material world? Therefore, in the beginning, Kunti Devi cleared away this misunderstanding by saying that the Lord is Prakrite Param, beyond this material creation. Yet he is a person, a person, and now by the grace of Kunti, we can understand that this supreme person, although Alakshyam, invisible, has now visibly appeared as Krishna. <coughs> Kunti Devi says, Krishna ya Vasudevaya. The word Vasudeva is sometimes understood to mean the all pervading. The impersonalists have this conception of Vasudeva. And therefore, Kunti Devi points out that Vasudeva, the all pervading, is Krishna. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hridasher Junatishtati. Krishna, the Supreme Lord, is present in everyone's heart. Thus, he is all pervading. Krishna, the original person, exists in three features as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as the all-pervading Paramatma, the Super-Soul, and as the impersonal Brahman effulgence. Those who are interested in Bhakti Yoga have no interest in the impersonal Brahman effulgence, which is for common man. If one were an inhabitant of the sun, what interest would he have in the sunshine? That would be most insignificant to him. Similarly, those who are advanced in spiritual life are not interested in the impersonal Brahman effulgence. Rather, they are interested in Purusha, the Supreme Person, Vasudeva. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, this realization of the Supreme Person takes place after many, many births. Bahunam Janmanam Ante The Gyanis, the impersonalists, who are attached to the Brahman effulgence, try to understand the absolute truth by dint of their knowledge. But they do not know that their knowledge is imperfect and limited. Whereas Krishna, the Absolute Truth, is unlimited. We cannot approach the unlimited by our limited knowledge. That is not possible. By the grace of devotees like Kunti Devi, we can understand that the all-pervading Absolute Truth, Vasudeva, Paramatma, 
is present as Krishna. Krishnaya Vasudevaya This realization of Vasudeva is not possible for impersonalists very easily. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 7.19 Bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan mam prapadyante Vasudeva sarvam eti samahatma sudurlaba Quote after many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare." Unquote. The word Mahatma means broad-minded. One who cannot understand Krishna is not broad-minded, but cripple-minded. If one becomes broad-minded, then by the grace of Krishna one can understand Krishna. The process of understanding Krishna is Sevan Mukha, by rendering service. Sevan Mukhe Hijehvadao Realization of Vasudeva is possible by rendering service, beginning with the tongue. The tongue has two functions, to vibrate and to taste. So if one repeatedly hears and vibrates Hare Krishna mantra and tastes prasada, food offered to Krishna, by this very simple method one will Realize Vasudeva, Krishna. Krishna will reveal himself. It is not that by our endeavor alone we can understand Krishna, but our endeavor in loving service will make us qualified and then Krishna will reveal himself. Svayam eva spuratyada. Krishna is very much anxious to take us back home, back to Godhead. But we are stubborn and do not wish to go. Therefore, he is always looking for the opportunity to take us back home. He's just like an affectionate father. When a son who is a rascal leaves his father and goes loitering in the street, with no food and no shelter, and suffers very much. The father is always anxious to bring the boy back home. Similarly, Krishna is the Supreme Father, and all the living entities within this material world are exactly like misled children of a wealthy man, who has left home to loiter in the street Therefore, the greatest benefit one can bestow upon one's fellow human being is to give him Krishna consciousness. No kind of material profit will satisfy the living entity, but if he is given Krishna consciousness, he will actually be satisfied. A bewildered boy loitering in the street may be reminded, my dear boy, why are you suffering so much? You are the son of a very rich man who has so much property. Why are you loitering in the street? And if he comes to understand, yes, I am a son of this important man. Why shall I loiter in the street? He may then return home. Therefore, the best service is to inform those who have forgotten Krishna. You are part and parcel of Krishna. You are the son of Krishna, who is full in all opulence. Why are you rotting in this material world? This is the greatest service. Maya illusion is very strong, but it is the duty of every devotee of Krishna 
to try to enlighten everyone to Krishna consciousness. Kunti Devi, for example, first said that although Krishna, the Supreme Person, is within and without, to fools and rascals he is invisible. Therefore, she points out, here is the Lord, Krishna. Krishna is the all-pervading Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishnaya Vasudevaya. But he is very much pleased to become the son of Devaki, Devaki Nandanaya. Devaki Nandana is also mentioned in the Atharva Veda. Krishna comes as Devaki Nandana and his father as Nanda Gopa, Nanda Maharaja. Krishna likes to be related with his devotees who act as father and mother. Although here, in this material world, we try to make our relationship with the Supreme by accepting him as father, Krishna wants to become the son. He takes pleasure in becoming the son of a devotee. Ordinary men want God as their father, but that is not very pleasing to Krishna, because the son always bothers the father. Give me this, give me that, give me this. <laughs> of course, Krishna has immense potencies by which he can supply as much as everyone wants. Eko bahunam yo vidadhati kaman. He supplies food to the elephant and he supplies food to the ant. So, why not to the human being? But rascals do not know this. They work like asses day and night to find bread. And if they go to church, there they also pray, give me bread. They are concerned only with the bread problem. Although the living entity is the son of the richest, most opulent person, he has created a bread problem. Just listen how this sounds. This is just... The living entity is the son of the richest, most opulent person. He has created a bread problem. This is called ignorance. He thinks, if I do not solve my bread problem, if I do not drive my trucks day and night, how can I live? This is the nonsense of our modern civilization. Where is there a bread problem? Krishna can supply unlimited amounts of bread. There are thousands of elephants in Africa, and Krishna supplies food to them. So, if he can supply food to the elephants, why not to the human beings? The Bhagavatam therefore says, don't waste your time with this bread problem. We should not waste our time with solving economic problems. Economic development is nonsense. Of course, this proposal is very revolutionary and people may even hate me for it. What is Swamiji saying? They may ask. But actually, it is a fact. Listen to this, right? This economic development is madness. Suppose one has a rich father and enough food. Suppose one knows my father is the richest man in the city. Then where is one's economic problem? Actually, that is our position. We have no economic problem. Everything is completely provided. We want water. Just see, there are oceans of water. Of course, we want pure water. And although the ocean has so much water, when the water is scarce, we shall have to take help from Krishna, 
who will evaporate the water and turn it into clouds. And then when the rain falls down, the water will be sweet. Otherwise, we cannot drink it. Everything is under control. And everything, water, light, heat, and so on, is complete. Om Purnamadah Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Quote, the personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. And because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are completely, perfectly equipped as complete wholes. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself. Because he is the complete whole, even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. Unquote. Ishapanishad Invocations Krishna's stock is never exhausted. We must simply become obedient to him, and the supply will be there. Therefore, a Krishna conscious person has no economic problem. Everything is sufficiently supplied by Krishna. In Los Angeles, the neighbors of our temple are sometimes very envious. You do not work, they say to our Krishna conscious devotees. You have no anxiety. You have four cars. You are eating so nicely. How is that? Actually, they are right. Somehow or other, we are getting everything we need. And we have no problems. For if one simply becomes a sincere servant of Krishna, everything is provided. They are envious of us because we do not work, but still we have so much. But why don't they come and join us? That they will not do. Come with us, we say, chant Hare Krishna. No, 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 that I cannot do. All right, then work with your trucks by zooming around in their cars and trucks they have made their own lives dangerous and they have created danger for others also at any moment there may be an accident but they say that this is civilization nonsense this is not civilization civilization means calmness prosperity and Shanti, peace. In peace and prosperity, one should be Krishna conscious always. People work so hard, day and night, simply for a little food, not knowing that their food has already been provided. We are talking, I'm um, just, just a short uh, intrusion, <laughs> we are talking about this and my um, heart is bathing in blood because I can really see all these, you know, lately everybody watches memes, so there are many memes which are, you know, like people are so frustrated, they say that they don't, they don't want to just work day and night and then their whole life have only two holidays where they're just trying to do some take some rest basically and have a two week off holiday once or twice a year like people's entire life became the bread problem literally literally the whole life people are just solving the bread problem and this is actually sick if you look at it like person's entire life has to be centered around how to eat and have roof over his head and somehow or other, you know, um, 
how you say, stimulate one's senses to not feel so bad because of wasting one's life. And this is really in like it may be sounding a little harsh, but it's very pathetic that this is the state of events right now. And of course, we understand this is Kali Yuga. It was meant to be like this. But it is not we are not meant to be like this. The time has come that the situation is like this. But you and I, everybody has their personal choice to, just like Shri Prabhupada said, to wake up and realize that everything has been provided and that we are meant to have a relationship with the Lord and we are meant to let's let's read further what we're meant to <laughs> okay so avidya karma samgyaya tritya shakti rishyate vishnu purana 6.7.61 this material world is full of ignorance avidya therefore our endeavor should be to become free from this ignorance it is only for this reason that we should work to come out of ignorance. We are thinking, I am this material body, I have to work day and night, and then I shall get my food, and then I shall live. This is ignorance. We have lived this life of ignorance in forms other than that of a human being. We have lived in bird life, in beast life, and so on. But now, in this life, we should be peaceful, calm, quiet, and should simply inquire about the Absolute Truth. Jivasya Tattva Jigyasa Atato Brahma Jigyasa That should be one's occupation. We are simply sitting down and inquiring about Krishna, and this is what one should do. This is life. Why should one work day and night like an ass? What kind of life is this? No, this is not life. Therefore, the Bhagavatam says that to one who is intelligent, Kovida, your life should be engaged for this purpose, for understanding the absolute truth. Then, how will my economic problem be solved? The answer is that the happiness one desires from economic development will come automatically in due course of time. Talabhyate Dukhavad Anyatah Bhagavatam 1.5.18 We are looking for happiness. Are you looking for distress? No, sir. Then why does distress come to you? If you are not eager for calamities and distress, why do they come to you? According to our karma, our life holds some portion of happiness and some portion of distress. Therefore, if Distress comes without invitation. Happiness will also come without invitation. We are already destined to have a certain amount of happiness and a certain amount of distress, and we cannot change that. The change we should make, therefore, is to get free from this material condition of life. That should be our only business. According to our karma, we are sometimes taking birth in a higher planetary system as demigods and sometimes taking birth as cats and dogs or as germs in stool. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, E rupe brahmanda brahmite kona bhagyavana jiva guru krishna prasadipaya bhakti lata bija According to their karma 
all living entities are wandering throughout the entire universe. Some of them are being elevated to the upper planetary systems and some are going down into the lower planetary systems. Out of many millions of wandering living entities, one who is very fortunate gets an opportunity to associate with a bona fide spiritual master by the grace of Krishna. By the mercy of both Krishna and the spiritual master, such a person receives the seed of the creeper of devotional service. Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 19.151 only a fortunate living entity gets the opportunity to associate with Krishna and Krishna's devotee. And in this way he gets the seed of devotional service, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then his life becomes sublime. Jai! So we are so fortunate that we have come in contact with Srila Prabhupada. Kunti Devi, therefore, is pointing our attention toward Krishna, the Supreme Person, who is Alakshya, invisible to all. Who is that invisible person? Here, Krishna. O oh, Krishna, one may say, there are so many Krishnas. Therefore, Kunti Devi says, I am offering my prayers to Vasudeva, the son of Vasudeva. There are many Vasudevas. No, Nanda Gopa Kumaraya. I am praying to the foster son of Maharaja Nanda. In this way, three times, she points out, here is Krishna. Krishna officially takes birth as the son of Devaki and Vasudeva. But in his childhood he enjoys the company of mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaja. This is Krishna's pastime. Ananda Lila Maya Vigrahaya. Krishna's pastimes are all jubilant. Ananda Maya Ubyasat. Vedanta Sutra 1.1.12 He is by nature full of bliss. We shall never find Krishna unhappy. Krishna is always happy. And whoever associates with him is also happy. Therefore he is known as Govinda. The word Go means senses. We are looking for sense gratification and if we associate with Krishna, we shall enjoy our senses abundantly, just like the gopis who are dancing with Krishna. Thus, there is no scarcity of sense gratification, but this sense gratifi gratification <laughs> in association with Krishna is not gross sense gratification. Rather, it is the association, it is the spiritual sense gratification enjoyed in the spiritual world. Ananda Chinmaya Sadujvala Vigrahasya That Ananda or pleasure is not the third class Ananda we enjoy with our bodily senses. <laughs> Third class Ananda. <laughs> okay. Such bodily enjoyment is not Ananda but illusion. We are thinking, I am enjoying, but that Ananda is not factual because we cannot enjoy this material pleasure of the senses for long. Everyone has experienced that this material pleasure comes to an end. Spiritual enjoyment, however, does not end. Rather, it increases. That is the difference. 
Ananda Chinmaya Sadujvala Vigrahasya Govindam Adi Purusham Tamahamba Jami Brahma Samhita 5.32 Therefore we have to associate with Govinda. Here also it is said, Govindaya Namo Namaha I offer my respectful obeisances to Govinda. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is so sublime that it puts one directly in contact with Govinda. The worship of the deity of Krishna in the temple is also direct contact with Govinda. Shri Vigraha Radhana Nityanam Nam Shri Ngaratan Mandira Marjanado Shri Guruvashtaka Text 3 The Vigraha, the deity of Krishna, appears by Krishna's mercy. Because Krishna is a Lakshya, invisible, he becomes visible to us. Mm. The text is invisible to me right now. <laughs> he becomes visible to give us the facility to see him. It is not that Krishna is stone, wood or metal. Krishna is always Krishna. But because we cannot see anything beyond material elements like wood, stone and metal, he appears in a form made of these elements. But he is neither wood, metal or stone. When we associate with the deity, we associate with Krishna personally. Because Krishna is invisible, he very kindly takes a form that is visible to us. This is Krishna's mercy. Do not think, oh, here is a stone Krishna. Krishna is everything, and therefore Krishna is stone also. But he is not the kind of stone that cannot act. Even in the form of stone or metal, Krishna can act as Krishna. And one who worships the deity will perceive that. Svayam eva spuratyada. The deity, although apparently stone, may speak with a devotee. There are many instances in which this has happened. Jai. Of course, one has to be a very advanced devotee for that to happen. Naturally, we have read also in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we will be reading these stories of the talking deity. I am very pleased, therefore, when my disciples nicely dress the deity offer the deity nice foodstuffs and keep the temple very clean. Shri Mandira Marjana Dau Marjana means cleaning. Whether one dresses Krishna or cleanses the temple, the spiritual benefit one receives is the same. Don't think I am only a cleanser and he is a dresser. No, the person who is dressing the deity and the person who is cleansing the temple are the same because Krishna is absolute. Therefore, one should engage in Krishna's service in any way and one's life will be successful. This is the Krishna Consciousness Movement. By the grace of Kunti Devi, we can understand that Krishna, Vasudeva, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The word Vasudeva also indicates that the Lord is understood when one comes to the platform of pure goodness, which is also called Vasudeva or Vishuddha Sattva. Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabditam Srimad Bhagavatam 4.3.23 To understand the Supreme Lord, we must first come to the platform of sattva, goodness. But goodness here in the material world is sometimes contaminated by the lower qualities 
ignorance and passion. By hearing about Krishna, however, one comes to the platform of pure goodness. Shrinvatam svakatha Krishna punya shravana kirtana we should try to hear and chant about Krishna always, 24 hours a day, and in this way the dirty things will be cleansed from our hearts. It is not that one should only attend the Bhagavata Saptaha, an official reading of Srimad Bhagavatam for seven days. That is another form of exploitation. In the Bhagavatam it is said, Nashta praveshva badreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya. The word nityam means daily or 24 hours a day. One should always read Srimad Bhagavatam and carry out the order of one spiritual master. The word Bhagavatam may refer either to the spiritual master or to the book Srimad Bhagavatam. So one should always serve the person Bhagavata or the book Bhagavata. Bhagavatyuttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki Then one will be fixed immovably naishtiki in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In this way, one should realize the benefits of the Krishna Consciousness Movement by the prescribed spiritual process and try to distribute these benefits to other people. To awaken the dormant Krishna Consciousness of others is the greatest welfare activity in the world. Haribo! This is what we are humbly trying to do over here. <laughs> that honestly this is exactly why, what we're doing right now <laughs> that um, the last time I was reading all of Srila Prabhupada's books this was the first round this is officially the second round like of all of them I was just thinking of how how is this how to make it so that you can uh, relish them yourself and at the same time share them and distribute the benefit of these books. We can actually see that devotees who were not Krishna conscious four or five years ago have been awakened and are now Krishna conscious. Similarly, others can be awakened also. There is no difficulty. The process is the same. By following in the footsteps of devotees like Kunti, we shall be able to understand Krishna's identity. For example, we may ask a person's identity by asking, Who is your father? What is your father's name? So, Srimad Bhagavatam presents God with his father's name, his mother's name, and even his address. address. We are not impersonalists with a vague idea of God. If one takes advantage of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, one can understand God perfectly and completely. Haribo, so let us take advantage <laughs> of this knowledge. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. We shall see you next time with the next chapter which is entitled The Vision of Lotuses. Hare Krishna.